Liz here with your Daily Lizard, and we're talking about the book Drive by Daniel Pink. Love this book, can't say it enough. Love it, love it. If you manage and motivate people, you need to be able to motivate people, you need to get this book. Don't, don't wait, just go out and get it. Save yourself the hassle and the struggles of doing it the wrong way. All right, so we're going to be talking for the next few days about carrots and sticks and the downfalls. So they call it in the book, they call it the seven deadly sins of carrots and sticks. And the idea here is that carrots and sticks have been around for a long time. Read all the details about, you know, dates and who and all that good stuff in the book, but it's been around for a long time. And carrots and sticks can give you the idea that what you're doing is working. All right, so let me first define carrots and sticks real quick. Carrots is kind of that motivator out in front of somebody or that um, incentive that is sitting out in front of somebody saying, hey, if you do this, then you'll get this. And the stick is kind of the, like the punishment, like the stick on your back or whatever, saying mm, you did that wrong. All right, now here's the problem with carrots and sticks. When you use carrots and sticks, initially they work really, really well really, really well. So it's easy to fool yourself into thinking that this is a long-term thing and the person is bad because you're doing the same thing you've always done. You're putting this uh, incentive out there and it worked really good for the first month and now the people are bad. Mm -mm, no, it's because this style of motivation doesn't work. All right, so carrots and sticks, the first thing, the first deadly sin that I wanna talk about is that it can kill off intrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation is that internal want, that what I call the want to, that internal drive. I do it because I want to do it. When you give somebody this outlier, this thing that is out there, that's what we call extrinsic motivation, then all of a sudden you take a joy, what, what the book calls play, and you turn it into work because all of a sudden I wanted to do it because it made me feel good, it was fun, it was exciting, it was interesting, I was meeting a goal, I was super excited to do this, doing a favor for somebody, etc. And now I'm doing it as a job. I'm doing it to earn the thing and it twists in your mind. So here's an example. Let's say that I wanted you to share these lizards and I said to you, hey, for every time you share a lizard, you just let me know and I will give you a Starbucks card. You could earn hundreds of dollars in Starbucks cards. Now, some people are going to be thinking, well, I love Starbucks. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that, I wanna do that. And they're gonna work really hard sharing these lizards for a while. And then they're gonna feel like, oh, really, I didn't even like that lizard. I'm, I'm not gonna share that. No, now they start becoming critical because now this is a job and now they're earning these cards that they don't even want anymore. I don't even care. They'll have lots of reasons why they don't even care about these Starbucks cards anymore. But the reason why it's hard is it feels like it works because in the beginning, it does. So what do you do? If you can't put this thing out there to get people to want to do it, then what? Huh? We'll be talking about that later, but for right now, no carrots and sticks, y'all. Don't do it. So your daily action is to figure out where are some of those places that you are extrinsically trying to incentivize somebody that worked before and isn't anymore. Let's eliminate those as quickly as possible. All right, that's it for today. Talk soon. Bye.